Hi, hello, welcome back to Last Looks. Hello, friends, how are we? Please excuse uh, the mess behind me. I'm a very messy person. Uh, sometimes that is one of the reasons that, get off the hair on my face, uh, that I don't film. So I'm just getting over it. It's like dressing room vibes, right? I mean, that's what this room is. Oh, I forgot to shut the door. Watch me struggle. Okay. That's because there's a bunch of shit in the floor. But anyway, um, this room gets used, so it's messy. Moving on, um, I cut my hair. This is a huge deal uh, for me. Um, for a long time, I was on like a hair health journey, uh, and now I am again, um, and my hair was quite damaged, so I decided to do a big chop. Uh, I love it. I feel like I look so cute with uh, short hair, plus, where I live, it's incredibly hot right now, so it feels a lot better to have short hair. And also, what this video is about is I've been quite inspired recently by um, 20s makeup looks. A lot of 20s silver screen starlets, um, a lot of 20s makeup trends, and recently I have been very interested in more historically accurate-ish types of 20 ma 20s makeup. So we are going to explore a few techniques from the 20s today. I did want to mention um, that I am not an expert on vintage uh, like cosmetics. Like I love makeup. I am a professional makeup artist, but like I like don't own the books and whatnot. A lot of this information today uh, comes from Aaron Parsons on TikTok. Actually, like the I learned about all these techniques from Aaron Parsons on TikTok, and then I did like my own research after that. So that's sort of like where today's ideas came from, but we're going to try three different um, iconic 20s makeup trends, hacks, like whatever you call it, which I find really, which I have decided on because I find them like interesting because they are not like what they're, how do I say this? The inspiration for these techniques um, come from the fact that makeup was so different in the 20s than it is now. Like, they didn't have, like, the shapes and uh, sizes of makeup that we do. Everything was kind of different. A lot of stuff was DIY. Obviously, makeup did exist, but, like, a lot of stuff was DIY. So today we are going to try um, Beaded Lashes, uh, the original Smokey Eye, and then we are going to try Max Factor's iconic Bee Stung Lip uh, technique. So, um, unusually for what we normally do, today we're going to start with lashes because um, it's a little bit of a thing and we're going to do them like off, off of our eyes because it is kind of dangerous. Um, so we are going to try beaded lashes. Um, I'm going to insert a couple of photos of what beaded lashes are. Basically, um, people like flappers, showgirls would use wax and put little beads on the end of their false lashes so that they are more prominent and pronounced. So I have this set of lashes. It's one of my favorite sets of lashes. I don't know if you can see it. <gasps> Beauty Guru. So it has like some spiky out bits. Um, when Erin Parsons on TikTok did this, she used um, some like really long, like all the same length, which would be more historically accurate, but I'm not, you know, this is what I have and this is what I think I'll like. Um, so I'm going to try to do that with this. And I think that what I'm going to start with, even though I've not seen any like reason to but I just think that it'll make it easier is I'm gonna put a little bit of mascara on these because they're like very fluffy and like when you put lashes on mascara obviously it makes them like sort of clump together so I'll get like some points of where I can put my beads of wax instead of um like trying to decide for myself so yeah that made like five little spikes see one two three four five and then I'm just going to sort of like, I decided to do this with my tweezers. I don't know why I was grabbing for, grabbing for it with my hand. But then I'm just going to take the tweezers and squeeze those little spikes together so that I can put beads on the end of them. Nobody told me to do this. I just feel like this is going to make things easier for me. There we go. Cute. Cute and spiky. Um, and then I'll do that for the other side. And then we'll let that uh, mascara dry so that we can put our beads on the end. 
All right, I do think that we will have to have a flame going so that we can melt it right before we put it on the lash so that it will sort of ball up like candle wax on the end of the lash. So instead of using this makeup brush that I really like, we are moving to, more historically, a toothpick. So, um, let's get a flame going uh, because I actually have a candle right here for um, our next DIY. So this will work perfect. Can you see it? Good. I was hoping you would. Would be able to. Okay. Yes, it is in frame. So we're going to light this puppy. Don't get at me for not trimming the wick. I don't really know what that does. Um, but this is a taper candle, you know. Whoa. Okay. Do not do this at home. This is dangerous. Or like have an adult watch you or something, whatever. You, you know, definitely don't do this on your eye, for God's sake. <laughs> you do not want candle wax in your eyeball. At least I don't. I don't know what you get up to in your spare time, but I don't want candle wax in my eyeball. Okay, so I'm dipping my toothpick in this wax kind of a bunch of times to sort of get a lot on there. And then I'm just going to heat it up again and then boop. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. We're starting to get a bead. Let's do it again to sort of round it out. Oh, there we go. Bead. I did it. Oh my God, I did it. I hope I can get good beads like that on the rest of them. I feel like I have to talk quietly because there's a candle in front of me. I think candles bring out like a reverence in me that I don't normally have. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that one was not good. Let's take it off. It's okay, we're learning. I do not have to be perfect at stuff the minute that I try it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna try it again. I feel like I should hold it to where they're not rolling down the lash. Maybe I grab my lash holding tweezers so I can hold them like more like this. Look at this guy. There we go. <gasps> Look at this one. There's like a perfect um, like moment where the temperature's just right that it's not dripping everywhere and it's also not like, um, looky here. And it can like grab onto the lash. Oh, perfect beads. All right, all right, all right. Oh, I'm scared. Okay. I want to get some of these shorter pieces to have a bead. Sorry if this is like not in front of my face. I'm trying to do this. I feel like I explained it fairly well so I can like actually work on it. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> Please don't drip. Please don't drip. What a bead. Okay. Ah! Okay. I'm going to try to do my other little short piece. Oh. <gasps> 
I did it. I did it. I did it. Ah! Okay. Okay. I'm gonna do the other one off camera. I'll be back. All right, so we are letting those beaded lashes dry for a minute and we're gonna move on to eyeshadow. Um, and I'm really excited about this. It also involves the candle. Uh, okay, so this technique is like credited to Marlene Dietrich, who is uh, one of my favorite 20s, 30s actresses. So beautiful, um, very menswear inspired in her fashion, but um, she is known for her iconic smoky eye. And um, her iconic smoky eye, according to um, like people who knew her, uh, was apparently actually made of smoke or soot from smoke. So what we have, um, some people, you can do this on any like heat proof metal surface. I've got a spoon um, and we're gonna light our candle again. Choo -choo -choo. And then basically I'm gonna hold this spoon above the candle and then the soot, the black soot from the candle is going to collect on this spoon. I'll let the spoon cool. And then um, Marlene Dietrich used Vaseline. Um, I think it's a little bit ridiculous that I don't have any Vaseline around currently, but I do not. So I'm gonna use Aquaphor, but similar um type of thing uh and then mix it up in this little spoon and we're gonna put it on as our smoky eye so let's go ahead and do it uh. okay really if you touch the fire with it is when you get the best soot building up some very good soot. I'm gonna make sure that we get like a lot of it, but like obviously this is not hurting the spoon. It'll clean right off. This is just like the s smoke from the candle, I guess. I don't know what it is, but we're using it as makeup. But like naturally, like not right now, if you're not like a candle person, but like this could also be found like inside candle snuffers or, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, like on your, I don't know, tea kettle, if you're putting it in a fireplace or whatever, but we're letting this cool. And blowing out our candle because we don't need it anymore. And uh, I'm scared to touch that because I bet it's really hot. <laughs> I'm gonna let this cool for like a decent amount of time. I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> All right, I am back. It's been uh, five minutes exactly. I set a timer. Uh, my spoon has completely cooled. Uh, be careful if you do this. We are all done, fortunately or unfortunately, with our F-I-E-R. F-I-R-E. I'm not allowed to spell out loud. Um, I can spell when I'm writing, but not when I'm speaking into the atmosphere. <laughs> Anyway, here's our soot. Um, I'm gonna start with a little bit of aquaphor instead of a lot, like on my finger instead of squeezing it into the spoon, just because I wanna make like the most pigmented smoky eye I can, um, just cause I wanna see if it can get super pigmented. So I'm starting with of aquaphor and I'm gonna rub it into this soot here in the corner of the spoon, like so. <gasps> oh, 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 okay. Um, I'm just gonna put it on. I'm gonna put it sort of like in the crease. Start with. <gasps> this is so fun. And then I'm gonna use a clean finger to blend that out in a sec. But honestly, I'm just gonna grab some more and do it on the other eye. I'm so excited. This is so cool. I need to be doing it with this finger. I can't do that on, uh, with my other hand. I can't make like this sweeping motion on this eye. Oh my gosh. Now, obviously, like, if you know anything about anything, this is gonna fucking crease and it's not gonna last very long, but honestly, I think that that is kind of a look. And then like all night long, you can, um, if you want to sort of just re-blend it out. I'm trying to keep it, keep it off my lash line because I want my eyelashes to glue on nicely. All right, and then I'm just gonna blend it out high up on the brow bone and then lower down in the outer corner because that is like a very 20s shape 
for things. And honestly, I think it looks good. I think it looks cool. Very, I mean, not super like pigmented seeming because obviously when you blend it out, it turns gray. But like when you put it on, like if I were to do another layer, which I probably will just for the sake of experimentation, um, I think it's really nice. Like it's a good technique, you know. I feel like we always think that like even with the 20s, we think that like makeup from a long time ago is like a lot more subtle than what we do. But like what we have when it comes to makeup technology gives us a lot more control over being able to make things subtle and or making it pigmented. Um, they had a lot less control than we did. Um, taking another little dab of Aquaphor. Just a weensy because I like how pigmented that came out. Just touched it. Then I'm gonna go on this fresh soot on the other side of my spoon. And then I'm gonna take this new pigmented business and go inner corner, blend it out just a tad. Outer corner, blend it out just a tad. <gasps> Again, well, let me use this finger. It wipes right off, by the way, um, just in case you were wondering. Honestly, this is so fun. If you had like, I know that a lot of people are like, we're back on, it's trendy to have like 1920s themed parties. Like I know I'm a little late for like the new year, whatever, obviously, but um, people are still having 20s themed parties. This would be such a fun thing to wear and talk about a good conversation piece I think um, I just did like a little bit in the outer corner and in the inner corner to darken it and give it more of that like 20s shape um, it's fairly easy to blend if you're like careful with it um, the only problem is that it like will blend away if you blend it too much which you don't want to do all right I suppose I put a, could have put my lashes on before and that would have solved this problem of like having to keep it off the lash line so that the, my eyelashes glue on nicely, but I those wax beads on the end of my eyelashes are fragile. Bad fragile, so um, I didn't want to be like trying to do this above them. Okay. Pretty. Um, I'm just gonna really quick take a just a dry q-tip and make sure that this is not on my lash line where I need to glue on my eyelashes because my uh, wax beads are looking fairly solid so um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some lash glue on uh, lately I like putting lash glue straight onto my eye I never do this with clients obviously but um, for my own in my own house, for my own makeup, I like it a lot. Be careful, don't get it in your eye if you do this. But I'm just gonna let that dry for a minute while we do our lips. Um, the lips technique. Uh, I This is actually what inspired this whole video, um, was a video from Aaron Parsons on TikTok talking about um, Max Factors original uh, bee stung lipstick technique for showgirls in the 20s and starlets in the 20s, silver screen girls. Um, so basically there were, there was makeup in the 20s. There was a lot of makeup in the 20s, um, but there were also a lot of techniques that were like continuing from earlier, um, but being used differently. So uh, this technique was popularized while a lot of lipstick um, was still made in little compacts instead of uh, being made in like a, a lipstick bullet. Um, so you would have to use a brush or your fingers to apply it or uh, people would use grease paint, which is what we're using today. I'm using a FX grease paint palette um, and it comes in a little, you know, palette. So um, I would have to use a lip brush, which I do, I do need a lip brush for this, but, um, Oh, I have one. You use a lip brush, but it's pretty tedious to draw on that iconic shape completely with the lip brush. So um, 
Max Factor developed uh, a technique where you use your thumb to build that iconic bee stung lip shape. And um, I'm really excited about it. So I'm using this grease paint palette. I thought I was gonna have to mix up a color, but um, this color uh, is very similar to um, Besame has a lipstick color. If you don't know what Besame is, they make vintage recreation makeup um, and it is like it basically copied from like exact colors from time periods. So Besame's 1922 blood red color is very similar to this grease paint. So I'm going to use that color and uh, we're going to go ahead and dip our thumb in there and uh, get to work. I'm so excited about this. All right. So basically what you do is, uh, I can't talk. You're just gonna have to watch me do it. Make your, uh, like Cupid's bow with your thumb. Overlining the top, obviously, to get that bee stung shape if your lips aren't already shaped like that. And then I will turn my thumb upside down and go here. And that is the base shape for the iconic 1920s lip shape. And now I will take my uh, lip brush that I, is in my hand and um, more carefully blend out uh, from there. Down to my natural lip line. And then not getting in the corners of my mouth because grease paint will bleed into the corners of your mouth which is another reason for this trick. Oh, it is important. I didn't mention this before, but I had my lips blanked out. That is kind of important for this, like, well, really any lip technique where you're going to change the shape of your lips. And there we go, there's my bee stung lips. Um, I have done a lot of 20s makeup looks in my life. I have drawn on a lot of 20s inspired lipstick shapes. I have never felt more accurate than when I, like more like I actually look like I am in the 20s than when I first did this bee stung lipstick. Like it is just so, like it brings you right there. It makes the perfect shape a little bit more ridiculous than we normally go for, which I love. Um, but like, I'm, I'm amazed by this. I'm obsessed with it. I'm a flapper. <laughs> All right. Now I think that our candle wax, la our beaded lashes have dried enough and our lash glue has dried enough that we can go ahead and put them on. And I'm so scared because they are fragile. They're fragile. But um, I think that they'll be okay once they get on my eye. I just don't want to like rub them against stuff. So let's just put on, put on our lashes. Oh, my eye, my smoky eye is creasing, but we'll live. All right, there we go. There's one. Mm. Come on. I'm normally very good at putting on eyelashes quickly, but these have beads of candle wax on the end of them. So give me a break. Oh, 
All right, now let's final touch, blend this out again real quick. All right. Here we have it, our uh, historically accurate-ish um, makeup look using historically accurate makeup techniques on a few parts of my face. Obviously I have regular makeup on before, but I don't have a full face option, but maybe I will. Um, honestly, I feel like I look so good and like good or bad aside, I do feel like I look very um, accurate to photos and movies and paintings and advertisements and stuff from the 20s. The most accurate I've ever looked. I bet we could pull this out even a little bit more at the end. It seems like the sides are starting to mat down, like what had less aquaphor, and you can really start to like blend it a little bit more, like to where you want it. Like, look at that pulled down. <gasps> I look so good and I look so correct. Okay, let's get up close and you can see my lashes, but like they look so, I wear these lashes like every day. They look so much bigger and more exaggerated with just the little beads on the end. I bet that there is an easier, less time consuming way to do this in like a, for like my regular everyday makeup looks and I'm gonna figure it out. So here we are. Obviously I put them on kind of wonk cause I was like speedily putting them on, but you know, not every showgirl is a professional makeup artist. Um, beautiful though. Like I feel very pretty. I feel like I look good. And um, ah, I'm so excited. Uh, I'll pop in. What am I trying to say? If you guys enjoyed today's video, I would love to um, do some more research on other eras um, or the 20s, but like I would love to go forward in time or backwards in time and try some more uh, historically accurate makeup looks and techniques. I can do some of my own research, I can buy books, I can do uh, whatever you guys think would be cool um, if you are interested in this kind of thing, because I am so interested in this kind of thing. Um, but, uh, if you like this video, please make sure to like it down below. And if you like me, please make sure to subscribe. I put out new videos every single, uh, week. Generally, I think on Thursday. Uh, but don't hold me to it. Don't hold me to anything. Um, but yeah, I've got, uh, I'm, I'm back to having so much fun. Uh, and I'm just looking forward to making more, uh, fun videos like this. I hope that you guys like my short hair. Um, I feel like I look so cute. Okay, uh... See y'all next week. Please subscribe and like this video. Okay, goodbye.